Now, since these are large sauropod figures, of course, I am ecstatic over the moon for these. Sauropods are some of my favorite species of dinosaurs, and it's always welcoming to get a large sauropod figure. This year has actually been pretty good uh, for us collectors getting large sauropods. So when Rebor announced that they're going to do these Diplodocus, and I saw the size of them, I was very, very happy. Now, I ended up getting my pair from Big Bad Toy Store. They retail for just under... $70 and they are 100% worth the price. Can wait till you see the size of these. I'll leave a link to Big Bad Toy Store down in the description if you want to order one for yourself. Now there is a third version of these Diplodocus. It's the Artist Proof Edition. It's a just a you know same exact figure. It's just cast and gray and it comes with an alternate neck with the mouth open. Didn't pick that one up because you know I just don't feel like painting things. Uh, so anyways let's go over the package really quick. We're just going to take a look at Stargazer Diplodocus. Uh, kind of guy on the top we got the male sim symbol scale 135 of this beautiful silhouette of the diplodocus skeleton and then spinning around we have a picture of all the wonderful products that rebo has been releasing over the last few years you know some of these products have been heavily criticized and some of the stuff they've done a pretty good job on and inside the box we do get a little pamphlet with some information about the plot. I guess we got skeletal, some information where it's from, and a picture of the skull and some of the bones. So enough about the packaging. Well, let's crack these things open and take a closer look. But before we do that, you may be wondering why these boxes look so small. Well, these figures come in three pieces. Here is the body right here. And then you do have the head which attaches. And I have to say, Rebor has got a lot better with these flexible pieces of attachment, you're just gonna wiggle it in there and you get a nice flush uh, seam on there. And then for the tail too, it goes in nice and easily. I know some of the older figures, it was an absolute pain in the butt to get the tails in, but these Diplodocus, it seemed to refine the process and it's a much, much smoother process getting these pieces in. And here are both figures are the packaging. And like I said, these figures are absolutely massive and I absolutely love them. Now they are based off the Walking with Dinosaurs, the Plotticus, uh, you know, Walking with Dinosaurs is a documentary, documentary that came out in the late 90s. And they did a pretty faithful, uh, you know, reconstruction of how the Diplodocus looked in the documentary. And I just absolutely love the, the, these things. The size of them is just immense. And thank God for those bendy tails and necks. Uh, I would not be able to uh, fully, you know, display these on the turntable during the review if the tail stuck out completely straight. Uh, you know, the color schemes are very faithful to uh, Walk With Dinosaurs. The one with the neck curved over here is the male, and this one over here is the female. So there's enough of color difference to differentiate the two. And just Rebo did an absolute knockout job on here. I just love how you can bend the tail into multiple uh, positions. Same thing with the necks. You have a nice roll of spikes going down the back. Uh, just all around, these figures are just absolutely beautiful. Are they 100% accurate? Uh, no, they're not, but they're pretty close. You know, just some of the muscular on the uh, the legs is a little bit off. But you know what? That's not a big deal to me. These figures are just fun. They do the bendy bends, and it makes me happy, and they're large, and they look absolutely awesome on my shelf. So these things are definitely one of the top figures of the year for me. And now time for some measurements. These figures are so long, they can't even fit on camera. So from the tip of the snout to the tip of the tail, this figure is 32 inches long or 81.3 centimeters. Seriously, that tail just goes on forever and ever. And for height of this figure, we're going to do it to the hips. It is five inches tall to the top of the hips with 12.7 centimeters. So Diplodocus in real life is between 79 and 85 feet long. Where you know, we're doing Diplodocus, uh, Carnegie, uh, was a hollow harem, definitely got a lot larger. So the plot is 79 to 85 feet long or 24 to 26 meters. I'll put this figure somewhere in the 130 to the 132 scale range. So it's a little bit big for 135 scale, but it just looks absolutely awesome next to all the other large seropod figures. And now let's zoom and take a look at some of the finer details, starting with the male stargazer. Now the biggest difference between this one and the female is the mouth is sculpted open on the male. It does look like it's articulated, but that's just the joint right there. Keep that mouth open and it cannot open and close. See the head sculpt is really, really nicely done. Lots of nice fine scale detail all over the head. You can see the eyes painted black, a glossy black color to give it that wet lifelike look. See the ear canal sculpted in right there. And then for the front of the face, let's see if my camera will focus in on that. It does not like how small uh, this model is. You can see the 
nostrils are sculpted at the front of the skull. You have a little bit of red for the male to let the female know that they didn't want to smash cloacas together and then going down to the very long neck. You have all these rows of osteoderms that goes all the way down. It's a double row that goes all the way across the body uh, onto the tail. And then on top of the neck, you have this row of spikes, which we know was first seen in the walking with dinosaur. Uh, Diplodocus whole figure is painted this greenish brown color. You do have some highlighting of dark striping along the neck and on the body. And then going down to the other side of the neck, you have a nice light coloration, nice folds and wrinkles. You know, the figure does give off that, you know, folded wrinkle elephant skin look that we see on a lot of older large sauropod figures. But up close, you can see that there is finely sculpted scale detail all over the figure. I think that looks absolutely great. Now going down to the arms, like I said, the muscular musculature on the arms is a little bit off, especially when you compare it to Eofauna's, which we will take out a little bit later. It's off-putting to some people, but if that's going to bother you, you're not going to get this figure. You know what? Uh, it's on you. You're going to miss out on an absolutely fantastic looking figure, but they do have the toes correct. You do have the one thumb spike uh, poking out, and on the bottom, you do get that, you know, horseshoe half moon like look for the front feet. Undersized, same thing, all that nice light coloration. There's a nice dark wash on there. They bring out all those folds and wrinkles going down to the very thick hind legs. I took the tail off because it's much easier to maneuver this thing around uh, my review table with the tail off. You can see nice folds and wrinkles around the thigh, very thick bulging muscles all over the place. Same thing with the hind legs. You've got the three toe claws showing, painted in glossy back black paint. And let's pop the tail back in really quick. Look how easy those tails uh, pop back in there. You do have a little bit of a seam, but it's not that bad. It's probably one of the cleanest looking seams I've seen on a reborn figure as of late. Can't really see a cloaca slit. I, maybe it's right over here, but that might just be a seam from the molding. But you can see the other side of the feet has some really nice detail on it. And here is a view of the figure from the top. Man, my camera does not like the figure. It keeps going in and out of focus. Nice, big, thick, heavy looking body. Nice, thick tail base that slowly tapers down to a very fine whip. Now the tail and the neck are made out of flexible material and you know it's a much harder uh rigid material it doesn't feel like uh what the reborn titanium bone was made out of we all know that thing had a million quality control issues it's actually a miracle that thing uh actually got made but i absolutely love love playing with this tail it is pretty much flex uh flexible up until like the very very tip of the tail and i've been playing with it a lot no cracks or anything yet but you know as with anything with a bendy wire the more you play with it the more stress you're going to cause on it, you're eventually going to see some cracks. But right now, it seems to be pretty durable. And same thing for the neck. You can get a nice curve uh, on the neck. You can actually even get some upward and downward movement on that wire in there. So, yeah, these things are just an absolute ton of fun to play around with. I just love uh, Reborn to give them bendy tails. You can get a couple different positions uh, with displaying these on your shelf. And now let's take a look at the female Catch the Rainbow. You see right off the bat, it has a much darker color scheme than the male. The color schemes are pretty similar, but I like how the male has a slightly uh, lighter color. The mouth on this one is sculpted clothes. Very, very nice. Aquaticus head sculpt, same thing. Eyes painted black with a glossy black pupil. You can see the nostril painted, uh, sculpted at the front of the snout. No bright coloration on the head because it is the female. Why does my camera hate these figures? Uh, but, you know, it's exactly the same sculpt except for the head. Uh, you got all those osteoderms going down. The row of spikes uh, along the top of the body goes all the way down to the tip of the tail. And then on the other side, we do have like a slightly darker uh, coloration than it is on the male. But you do have that nice uh, dark wash that brings out all that nice detail on the figure. You can see all that nice finely sculpted scale detail all over it. You do have some blotches of like light gray speckled in you have some nice striping on top of the back and same thing you know muscular on the legs is a little bit off but you know they got the toe claws and feet shape right on the front and hind feet and then going down to the tail nice nice tail i feel like the seam on this one is a little bit more noticeable uh than on the male for some reason it might just be like the coloration but still Re reborn did a really nice you know flush finish on here we all know how hard it was to get the freaking tail in on the, the T-Rex kiss, but there's a much, much more pleasant experience. You go all the way down to 
to that bendable whip like tail so yeah absolutely digging these two figures they just look absolutely incredible next to each other and i'm glad i've got bolts so it looks like we have a pair of them you know the only problem you're going to have is displaying these on yourself because they are going to take up a ton of room now for comparison first up here it is with collecties 140 scale human figure and next up let's do some reborn other jurassic period dinosaurs here it is with their sorrow faggot axe uh it scales decently with the diplodocus it's a little bit uh too big but i still think they look awesome displayed next to each other on the shelf and next up we have their stegosaurus which also looks great i absolutely love reborn's uh stegosaurus it's one of my favorite uh stegosaurus figures of all time and then lastly for their jurassic carry figures here it is with their old ceratosaurus i think everything you know displayed together is nice little uh you know reborn morrison formation uh thing going on hopefully they do uh more large sauropod uh Dinosaurs. Right, so i really really hope these supply can sell really well because i'd like to see them take a chance and do more uh love to see you know we just you know got holland got goods up patasaurus we'd love to see their take on it. i would really love to see uh, a barosaurus that's a species a lot of us have been dying for our morrison formation uh collections and i think rebor you know found the trick to making these big figures because they come in three pieces it saves on a shipping with a smaller packaging and you get the bendy neck and tails there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with them so i really hope these sell well and rebor decides to make more large sauropod figures i think it's gonna make a lot of us very happy and next up here it is with their t-rex kiss which is still an absolutely amazing amazing looking t-rex figure still one of my favorite rexes in my collection i want to do a couple a few other morrison uh formation dinosaurs from other companies here it is with pinesso stegosaurus and i think these scale a lot better with the diplodocus and let's move mr stego over to the side and here is safari's take on stegosaurus and next up let's do another safari figure here it is with their allosaurus and i think that looks really really nice with these diplodocus much better than the saurophaganax and lastly here is pnso's take on allosaurus same thing looks really really nice scaled next to these diplodocus and lastly see so if we can get this big boy into shot with these here it is with holland gods i'm gonna move the female off to the side so we can get this beautiful patasaurus next to these diplodocus just to show you how nice they look together i think they scale really really well it shows you the, the difference of how heavily bodied a patasaurus was next to the diplodocus another company that you know give us a lot of seropod figures holland good and same thing hope their patasaurus sells really well i'd love to see them uh do more you know both figures cost roughly the same price and it's just awesome we're getting these very affordable yet large seropod figures now and lastly, here's a group shot of most of the Plotticus figures uh, out there. I am missing a few, like, collect days and stuff. But, uh, yeah, look how far we've come up here next to the Reborn. We do have the old Invicte the Plotticus. Uh, that thing was a childhood toy that I took absolutely everywhere. I, I used to chew on the faces of these things for some reason. All, all my Invictes have, like, bite marks on them. Yeah, I was really, really young uh, when I got these. Uh, down here is the Carnegie Collection Diplodocus, which is still an absolutely impressive feat, uh, piece. And down here is Safari's uh, Limited's take on Diplodocus. And over here is Eofauna's Diplodocus, which came out last year. The Eofauna one is definitely the most scientifically accurate out of all these. Eofauna always does fantastic work when researching their figures. Uh, but, you know, my top pick is the Reborn one. It's just such an impressive figure. And just like the bendy tail and neck really elevate th this thing uh, among the other figures out there. So, yeah, it's like my top uh, pick for the Plotica figures out on the market right now. So, final thoughts on Reborn's take on the Plotica's. These figures are everything that I've ever wanted in a large sauropod figure. They're big, flexible tails and necks. And they're just impressive looking. You know, I'll give them about a 90%. You know accuracy on here i know everyone's like big on accuracy everything needs to be absolutely perfect but you know what these things are just so damn fun uh i can overlook the small flaws that they have they are definitely one of my favorite sauropod figures of all time it is my definitive version of the plotticus on my shelf and like i said earlier and to get these from big bad toy store they retail for just under 70 bucks for like the size of these things that's a hell of a deal i really really 
hope these things sell well. I want more big figures from Reborn. Uh, the link down to Big Bad Toy Store is down below in the description. So that will do it for the review. I do have some early production samples coming in from Beast of the Mesozoic from the uh, Tyrannosaur series uh, Wave 2. I should have those probably early next week. So be on the lookout for those. I think I'm getting three figures uh, from Wave 2. So stay tuned for that. And as always, if you're enjoying the content on this channel, show your support by hitting that subscription button just below the video. Each subscription helps out the channel tremendously and it's greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys for the next one.